All right, this is going to be a quick video to show you how to update the analog pocket, the firmware. So I have three analog pockets here. <laughs> I'm a pretty big fan. I've got the original white, I've got the glow in the dark, and I've got the transparent smoke color here. Um, but basically, I've already gone through and tested the firmware updates and everything. If there is a firmware update that's not going to work well with OpenFPGA, which is the, the program that runs all the emulators and ROMs on your handhelds, I will definitely reach out to you and let you know and send out a mass message to everyone that's bought the item from me. But I've already tested on the Go in the Dark and the white one. It works just fine. I'm going to show you how to update it on my smoke one over here, and then we'll just go from there. So the first thing you want to do is take out the SD card reader from the little slot on the side there. I've already got that in front of me here. And then we want to put that into an SD card reader. So the best one that I've found, honestly, has been this little one called Anchor by Anchor on Amazon. It's about... 13, 15 bucks, depending on, you know, when you buy it. And just put the SD card in the slot reader here, and then you'll put that in the USB slot on your computer. Now, I have a Windows computer and I have a Mac computer. Um, so this will work on either one of them. And that's going to be real easy. So the first thing you want, you're going to see when you put that in is, I'll show you this right now. It's going to show me, whoop. I have mine set to show me the contents of my SD card reader as I uh, plug it in. So I'm going to try and zoom in here. Let's see. So whether you're on a Mac or on a Windows, you're going to see these things right here. Okay. So now this SD card reader, I've already put the file on there. You're going to see pocket firmware most likely right now, if you're watching this, you know, in December or 2023, pocket firmware one underscore one bin, which is the old firmware. Okay. Right now we're on 1.2, and if you watch this in the future, it's going to be something else, you know, 1.4 or 5, whatever. So what you're going to want to do first is go in here and then delete this. We'll just delete it because, you know, who cares? Boom. Okay, and that one's, that's taken care of. And now the second thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go, well, I'm going to get all these out of the way, up to Analog Pockets website. So I'll just pretend like I'm back at the beginning of it again. And then we'll zoom out now. Up here in the top right, you're going to see a little link for support. You're going to click on that. You're going to go to Pocket. Click on that. Well, Analog Pocket's website is, by the way, it's analog.co. That's really it. And then right here, you'll see the latest firmware. So we've got 1.2. We're going to download that. Boom. And then that's going to take two seconds to download. Here it is right here. 1.2 bin. So we will then take that, drag, and just drop it over. And then, boop, there it is. And that's all you have to do. And we're going to put it in the, in the analog pocket, and it's going to update. Now, if you also want to, and I recommend doing this, update the open FPGA, the emulators or the ROMs, the things that runs all your games. Um, you can do that as well, too. So I'm going to actually do that one here. I'm going to click on the pocket underscore updater dot exe thing. This does not work for you that have a Mac. This only works for people on Windows. And this is going to pop up here. Well, there is going to be a Mac or a Wind a, a Mac version of this updater here soon. I just don't have it yet. Uh, so this is going to pop up. It's going to either say one or two things. You know, welcome to the black market, or it's going to show you something other than this. And it will say, hey, there's an update available for this thing. Do you want to install it? And if you say, and it will, and to install it, you hit the letter I to install. Okay. Um, and then once you hit the letter I to install, because it'll have like a little bracket around the I for install, like a little you know, bracket, then you'll see this after you hit the I for install. Okay, so definitely install that. Then you'll see this, and then you're going to want to hit zero to update all. This is a video that I've already sent to you before um, during your purchase message, but, you know, that was a long time ago for some of you. All right, cool. I don't know why it's doing this. Get out of the way. It's going to go through and just update everything. This could take, depending on how long it's been since you've updated it, it may take you 30 seconds. It may take you five minutes, <laughs> 10 minutes. So because what it's going through and doing is, is if there's been a new emulator or core added, it's going to download that for you. And if there's been new uh, arcade games that have been added to the arcade section, it's going to download all the arcade games for you too. So you're going to have all of it. It's, going to be really, it's, it's actually really cool. And then once it's done, you'll see this right here. Fun fact, the only cores that support save states and sleep function are the following. And it'll tell you all these things there. So that way you know if there's been any updates since last time. And just checking here, we've got NES, Tamagotchi, Wonderswan, PDP-1, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Game Gear, SG-1000, and Sega Master System. So nothing's new so far. We'll hit X on that. We'll go over to here. 
And now we're going to eject this card. I have so many things plugged in right now, but my uh, analog pocket card is uh, this one. It has to be this one. E drive? Yeah, it's this one. Eject that. And then I will pull it out of the SD card reader. And then we'll go back here. Okay, so then we're going to put it into this one in a little slot here. Okay, let's see. Whoa. I'm trying to look at it through the camera. I should look at it through my real, my real eyes. Not be a dork here. Okay, then turn it on. And then you should see this. Boom. And now I'm not gonna have you, I'm not gonna force you to go through and watch this entire thing. This might take a while. Oh, well, I think it takes like a two or three minutes. But once this is done and complete, you're gonna see the regular open FPGA cartridge, whatever menu, and then you're just on your way. So hopefully that helps you out. If you got any questions, let me know. Also, if you really need a grip for your analog pocket, there's a really cool shop on Etsy called Power Up. Yeah, Power P W R U P that makes really great grips. I've had these for a long time and they're fabulous. It's, if you're playing the analog pocket for any long period of time, you, your hands might get cramped like mine. I'm, I'm six foot three, so I've got big hands here. But this makes it so comfortable, and it, more importantly, it makes it so easy to hit the L and R buttons on it. I just really, really like them a lot. As you can tell, I've gotten, I've picked up one for all of my things, and they're just really clean and nice, and they match. The, I color match the thing. This is even a glow in the dark one for the glow in the dark pocket. So, anyways, that's not a. And I'm not a you know salesman for that. Should stop. I'm just saying that I've had a lot of grips and tried a lot of interesting uh, accessories for these, and by far this is my most, most favorite. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Reach out to me, I'm happy to help answer anything. But yeah, this will get you going. And then if you have a Mac and you want to update your updater there, you can reach out to me too. And and I'll let you know if uh, if and when that updater for the OpenFPGA will be available to you as well. Anyways, take care and I'll talk to you soon.